اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ولن تردا ان کل جہود و ولن نصارا حتا تتبیا ملت صدق اللہ العظیم رب شرح علی صدری و یسر علی عمری واہل العقدم ساری یفق ہو قولی رسپیکٹڈ ویورز اینڈ لسنرس السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ The verse which I have recited is from Surah Al-Baqarah chapter number 2 verse 120 Allah says this is the segment walan tarda ankal yahud wa lan nasara hatta tattabi'a millatahum that all muslims these jews and christians will never 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 be satisfied with you unless you adopt their brand of religion either become like them or make them like yourselves there is no middle hope no serenity no peace it will be always deception that are muslims These Jews will never, never, never be satisfied with you unless you adopt their brand of religion. This verdict has been given in the Holy Quran for 1400 years ago. And the one who is giving is the creator of the heavens and the earth. Allah, the only true God. telling the nature of his creation that these particular people will never never will never satisfy with you no matter what you do with them what peace treaties you make it will be considered as the pretext or a lie you see a trickster bamboozles he bamboozles the people subterfuges the people tantalizes the people inwardly he does not mean it inwardly he is trying to deceive you there is a big cloud of deception all around the world and it is very hard for a common man to recognize it the reason why i have recited this verse is today the current situation of israel the things which these people are enforcing on those poor palestinian is going way epidemic proportion alarming proportion those injustices those atrocities brutalities propensities absurdities will not be ignored now because people have a foresight we can see easily what is happening there since 1917 by balfour declaration by the balfour declaration which allowed these jews to go back to palestine and settle there the excuse they have is very simple this land is given to us by god almighty so it is ours it means that every nation should bring their documents and should start claiming their properties will you justify that will you justify that the people before jews they come or they would come and tell jews that we were living before moses peace be upon him give us back our lands will you able to recognize recognize it reconcile it will you no You see every person in the past was living in some kind of properties on the land on premises 
But it does not mean that after thousands of thousands of years, you are claiming those lands because according to you, you said that God gifted us. Theological explanation is not a rational explanation. It could be true. It could be false. So who gave you the right or who gave Jews the right to kick those poor Palestinian Arabs, Palestinians, and they claim that this land belongs to them alone. All the prerogatives, all the pleasures will be only given to Jews. Why? What is the reason? Who gave you this authority? According to Genesis, in the beginning, chapter 11, 12, you see, we are told in the Bible, Abraham salam, was having two sons. And the only son which was with him was Ismail, Ishmael. And he was the only seed according to the Bible context. And suddenly, Isaac came into the existence in the Bible. It's like a, just like a shift. According to the Jewish law, the first child must get all the inheritance, all the prerogatives. <coughs> Sorry, all the prerogatives, the first child. But you see over here, the second child is getting every pleasures and prerogatives. Why this hypocrisy? Is that the reason because the Arabs were the progeny of Ishmael? And then you read Bible, it says clearly that Ishmael thy son, Ishmael thy seed, Ishmael twelve princes ye shall beget, and God will give him the great nation, will sorry, make him a great nation, and he will be blessed. Do you know the meaning of blessed in English? And after a few chapters, this guy is cursed. So God is changing his mind continuously in the Bible. You know why? Because of the Jews. Jews wrote this book with their own hands. And then they say this is from Allah. So they can mint some, you know, benefits out of it. Racial creed. Jews, Judaism is the racial religion based on racial creed. You can never become a Jew even you try to convert yourself. You will be called a second grade Jew, not the first. Those prerogatives, those privileges will be only given to the Jew who was born there. In Jewish family, Ashkenazi or whatsoever, you want to make and fit your Jewish race to the race of David, Peace be upon him. Congratulations, it is your privilege. But no one can become a real Jew unless he is born into that religion. We are the children of God. We are forgiven. You see, Jews are living in a big haze. Dream. And they know it. Armstrong. Magazine. 1920, sorry, 1990s. We need another Pearl Harbor to fulfill our final goal. The goal of Armageddon, the book of Revelation, to make the whole paradigm shift to the west, to the east, and then make some initiatives to instigate Armageddon or Armageddon. And they did it. You know how we can see that the world has been changed with lies, deception, subterfuging, bamboozling, hoodwinking, and now everybody is suffering. Then you sugarcoat all the matters. Then you make commissions and then you proclaim yourself, oh, we were the one who did it. I know you what point I am making a referring here. People know. And the whole world got rid of it, killing innocent people, and at the end enjoying aristocracy. Nobody's here to catch wasps, white Anglo-Saxon Protestants, along with the Zionist Jews, Theodore Hurls, 
did all these things. You know, even today, if you go to Israel, there are some Orthodox Jews. They do not accept the initiatives of Theodore Herzl, the Zionist political movement in 1800s lost. The protocols of the elders of the Zion. Zion is the mount, mountain in Palestine, Jerusalem. In the middle, there is Doom of the Rock, Sakhartul Kubra, Kubrtul Sakhra. And on the right side, lower, there is Masjidul Aqsa, Masjidul Aqsa, the Mosque of Aqsa. And on the other side, there is a wailing wall. This wall is the broken remnant of the second temple of Solomon, peace be upon him. You see, if you read the Bible, two times the temple was destroyed. First time by Nebuchadnezzar or Nebuchadnezzar. The king of Babylonia, Iraq, came with a fierce force and destroyed the temple. The first temple, the house, the worshipping house for the Jews, which were Muslims, because Sulaiman was Muslim, not a Jew. Judaism, not a word you find in the Bible anywhere. Moses said my religion was Judaism. Concoction of these terminologies, concoction of these uh, morphemes, concoction of these morphologies. So, Sulaiman alayhi salam made the temple with the help of jinn, this is the creation of God. This temple was destroyed because of the propensities of these Jews not obeying God Almighty. God gave them the hammer by these people. Nebuchadnezzar destroyed the first temple and gone. After that, it was revived by Uzair alayhi salam, Izra. And he brought those whole parchment of Jews, this Old Testament in one day. So they call him the son of God. Israel is the son of God, one of the sects of Jews. Then God gave another hammer. But that hammer came so later when they insinuated the one of the mightiest messengers of God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Isa ibn Maryam, the son of Mary. Peace be upon him. So Uzair alayhi salam Isra revived and he made that, uh, you know, brought this uh, spiritual stuff. And then Zulqarnan, the man with the two horns, the Cyrus, Cyrus the Great, who joined Mesopotamia. With the help of his people and the army, he brought Jews back and destroyed those Akkadians kingdom by Nebuchadnezzar, Iraqi Babylonian king. And then he brought that new uh, empire by the name of Maccabees. There is a Bible, there is a book in the Bible, the book of Maccabees. And then again, the Jews again started those all kind of propensities with, where all the prophets of God threw on their faces. Jesus Christ said, before Jesus, Moses said, you are stiff neck people. Since I liberated you from Pharaoh's bondage, Jesus said, you kill prophets from righteous Abel to Zechariah, the son of Bacharias. The blood of the prophets will be upon your shoulders, O Jews, on the day of judgment. What kind of people are these? What kind of inferiority? Your inferior, you know, the level of extremity these people were having. That the time of their prophets are cursing them. So, somehow they repented and this Cyrus the Great helped them to revive and make the second temple. Then after many years gone, 70 AD, after they tried to kill Jesus Christ, which Allah says according to Islam, he was saved and Allah took him up alive. A-L-I-V-E, which you find all along after the alleged crucifixion in the four Gospels that Mary Magdalene saw Jesus and he was alive. The other from the appear, disciple from the Amos, they saw Jesus was alive, alive, alive. And you say resurrected, 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 where there is no word resurrected used ever. Once for Jesus Christ after the alleged crucifixion. Alive. So God took him up alive. This is not the topic right now. So 
whatever Jews thought who killed, that's not our business. According to Jewish concept, they think that we killed Jesus Christ. They got rid of that imposter, inverted commas, and they are waiting for the real Mashiach, which will be the Jal, Antichrist. This is not even the subject to. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, Isa ibn Wari Maryam was the right Christ. Quran testified that. Christians took out of religion from this uh, incident. They got it redemption. Jews got it riddance. Islam says the optimal solution, neither he was killed nor crucified, but it was made to appear to them so. You have no certain knowledge for yaqeenan. They killed him not. This is the verdict of Quran, chapter 4, verse 157. So God took him. So after Jesus' ascension, alive, according to Islam, 70 AD, Roman emperor by the name of Titus, he killed all the Jews. He massacred them. In the large Macabre, it was a big massacre in Macabre and killed them. Their diaspora started. They said historians, 600,000 Jews were killed in one day or maybe 100,000 around that figure. And he killed, uh, sorry, he destroyed the second temple where you see now there is a wailing wall there that is the remnant and the leftover of Heckles Sulemania, the temple of Solomon on Mount Zion where the Zionism came. And then in the middle, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came 600 years. He did Mi'raj, the heavenly ascension. And that thing in the middle, Walid ibn Marwan, the, one of the rulers of Bani Umayyah, he made doom on the top, doom of the rock, where Prophet ascended to heaven the night of Al-Isra or Mi'raj, the heavenly journey. So this is the point here. That is why it is holy for us. And Masjid Al-Aqsa was the Masjid made by Suleiman, which Jews can call them synagogues, whatever they want. Because Allah says in the Quran, you call churches or synagogue or masjid or mosques. If there is a, the worshipping is in the right way, then all will be accepted. You don't need to say masjid. It's okay. But if you worship their donkey, monkey, pigs, then there is a problem. You worship God with true spirit, no body, shape, size and proportion or figments. So, Titus destroyed and killed many Jews and they had to flee to different parts of the world and Muslims accepted. They came into Khyber, Medina, Arab Jews, Yemeni Jews and rest of the Europe, Poland, R Russia, on and on. This they call it diaspora before they did exodus after pharaoh from moses then they got another migration they call it diaspora where they were living in ghettos they were not having anything slums in the poor areas poor parts the life of misery and they did it they suffered every easter these christian killed them burned them and put them on the stakes burned their books and they said christ killers these people kill our god inverted commas and Muslims gave them shelters. Even Muslims gave them this much prerogative that one of these leaders, these governors were Jews at the time of Hispania, Spain. Muslims ruled Spain for 700 years. And this is what latitude they gave to them. And now they turn the tables and attacking us. And the people who killed them on every Easter day, now they are with them, these Protestant wasps, because they are the influenced fruit and cultivated plants or production or harvest, harvestation of Martin Luther and Kelvin. Jewish concept, Protestantism came, Church of Anglican England came, cut the ties with Pope, and we want to change the books, remove those six books out of one of those book of Maccabees, and they created their own way. Scientific knowledge came into existence. Bible was translated into from Greek into Latin, Hebrew into Latin, the Latin into Greek in English, under the majesty of King James in 1611. And then people came to realize there are grave defects in the Bible. Because at the time of Pope, 
people who are not into an access of the Bible, anyone reading Bible or scientific knowledge, kill them, burn them. I'm exaggerating maybe, but there was really severe punishment. So these the scientific knowledge was also this had it not been for people to buy caught with Pope, break, break the taqlid, there wouldn't have been any scientific revolution or renaissance or reformation in Christendom or in Europe, I rather say. So Jews are came. Then after all these prolonged years after that, Jesus Christ, alayhi salam, Prophet Muhammad salam, came into Arabia. 325 AD, another thing happened. Constantine from Antioch, he converted into Christian into Trinitarian formula and there has persecuted all the people by the deity of Christ, by the show of hands, political hands like democracy, theocracy, demotheocracy, and they anointed Jesus as the part of the Trinity. They anointed Jesus as God. And rest of the all people, Unitarians and the early Orthodox were ruined. So that is why when Prophet ﷺ came, all of the Europe was Trinitarian, rather Unitarians. So Prophet came, these Jews, they were, you know, they give Prophet a very hard time. I don't want to go into detail what did they do with their own people first, like how they split Christianity from the sect of Jews. Then again, they split again Christianity into two more Roman Catholicism into Protestantism. And then when Islam came, how they split Sunni and Shia. And then Islam came, how they split, you know, these things. Four types of enemies were there with Prophet Muhammad continuously since he proclaimed his prophethood. Proclaimed means that since he told to the people, since he told to the people that I am prophet, tells to the people. You see, Kuffar in Makkah, disbelievers of Makkah, fierce animals, worse enemies. Then uh, Jews and Christians. Then Munafiq in Medina, the hypocrites of Medina. Four kind of groups were continuously disturbing Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu in his entire missionary work. And they act like innocent cherubims. More than 50,000 books have been written against the stature of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who is being revered by more than 1.8 billion people around the world. They break and they destroy their sentiments. Like in Stockholm, in Sweden, they are doing this burning of the Quran and they are playing with our sentiments and they want us to be bored like them. Like the South Park cartoons, they said Jesus was bastard. They want us to do the same thing. This will not work with us. We love our Nabi and we love more than our deaths, more than our lives. So don't take a chance on Muslims. Don't test our faith. Don't test us. Don't just let us, you know, don't spark or don't, you know, ignite. Rather, I said, don't ignite the spark which is in the hearts of the Muslims. Coal, our burning, our fire, our fuel is burning in a low, uh, you know, uh, frequency or a low velocity. So don't make us, you know, rise our speed. So after that, Muslims embrace them in Spain. Okay, fine, you can come with us. How did they do this? And now I just read news now two days back. Benjamin Netanyahu may be coming back again. And they are expanding to the West Bank. They want to make 18,000 more units. And they want to kick those Palestinians out or they want to, make, you know, do some, settle them or register themselves in the Israeli government area that we will watch you, monitor you and you just be slaves. And this is what Prophet Sallallahu says. That this is the time which is near where the Dajjal is going to arrive. Everything has been taken away from Jerusalem. It became the capital of Israel now. Before it was the capital of Palestine. And now things are getting changed there day by day. Recently, one of the guy, he went to Masjid al-Aqsa, one of the representatives, whole of the world reacted. And I appreciate that. You know, these, these people are checking. There is something going on. There is something going on. There is something microanalysis going on from the dictation of their Dajjal. And they want to make sure that everything is okay before he really comes. So they want to expand. You see, you need to understand the nature. 
if you believe in the concept that you are a superior racial race, superior divine race, then what else remains? You know, the creator is giving you privilege to kill his own creation by one of the groups of the people. Now, what remains left? What prerogatives left for Palestinian people? What prerogatives or what destination left for Muslims by the hands of Jews? If every Jew is, is, is understanding that he is entitled to kill any Muslim or any people and there is no trial for him or her on the day of judgment, the most important day of every religious person. So this is the mentality which I'm educating you. This is the historical aspect. They did not forgive their prophets who you are and me. Who are the Gentiles? You have no worth. You are just piece of nothing. Smithreens. You are nothing. Speck out of speck for them. And you watch their documentaries. You watch their videos. The sermons of these Jews where these elders are, you know, saying these rabbis. Look at their haze. They are living in their own world. Okay, this Messiah is coming anytime. Anytime is coming. And they are preparing all this stuff as, as something like they are getting direction or direct, you know, commands from this Dajjal. I don't know from where. It seems like something is going on. The way they are talking with, you know, this cocksureness or with a certainty, you can sense something is fishy. Something is not right with them. And the way they are proclaiming and the way they are saying that this is our, this is ours. And nobody is coming to attack the, you know, this is a time. That's what Prophet says. The time will come. Even the stone will cry. The Jew is hiding behind him. Sorry, behind me. So get him. Get him. Oh, Abdullah, oh, the servant of Allah, get him. Even the stones will cry. You see, there is a tree by the name of Gharqad, Oxythoron. And that tree grows widely. Not in a tall direction, it goes wide direction. So rabbits and all these, you know, small animals, they hide themselves from the predators. So this is the seed which every Jew is bowing or brewing under his, you know, these lands or their lawns. They are doing it. Because they say that this Nabi Muhammad, وسلم, they believe in him. They believe him. Allah says, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Jews have known you more than their own sons. Jews have known you more than their own sons. But they don't want to believe in you because they have the altercation. They have this, uh, you know, contradiction or what you call agitation with Archangel Gabriel. That why Jibreel Alayhi Salam went to one of the Arabs. No, why not us? So we are against him. We are on the strife and consternation and confrontation against him. On the day of judgment, we are the chosen people. God, we are the children of God and Allah will be on our side against Jibreel. Astaghfirullah. This is the clash. They know Prophet Muhammad is true. They know that is why they are bowing the seed. It is us who are doubting. It is us who are doubting. Trust me, Muslims. Jews know Prophet Muhammad because Allah says, O oh Muhammad, they have known you more than their own sons. And you can see that in the whom fit Torah will injil. Even today's Torah and Injil, Allah says, every time and era Torah and Injil, you will never be able to eradicate the name of Prophet Muhammad in any era. This is what it means. The fail, the verb which is used in this Arabic ayah of Quran that you will always find the name of Prophet mentioned in Torah and Injil. And this is not the subject. Prophet Muhammad has been mentioned by the proper noun in the book of these Jewish and Judeo-Christians. So they know you. So they are doing this. They know this all. And they are living in the haze. Presuming that we will be forgiven, even we do the strife and consternation against the last prophet. It's not needed, it's not required. We are the chosen and the closed children of Allah, God, Jehovah, Jehovah, and nothing will happen to Elohim. Nothing will happen to us on day of the judgment. They're living in a false hope with more false hopes of Antichrist Dajjal. 
So this is what they are doing. They're living in this mentality. And you want to talk to them? <laughs> you want to do, you know, conciliation? This is all haze. Because they are clever enough, they know how to make the difference between the occupied and the occupied territory. They are, they are the masters in these choice of word. Occupied territory or the occupied territory, quite different thing. Jew or the Jews, a quite, the capital Jew is a quite different thing. They know it, but you don't know what's the difference. It's the concept, it's the ideology. That we are better race than you, we are better than you all, we can do whatever we want to do with you, we can use book of Kabbalah, the black magic against you, with the help of those demons, with the help of the shayateen, may Allah protect us from the magic of Jews, you have no idea how, the, how fierce and how you know, dangerous the magic, the black magic Jews know. They learned from Harut and Marut from the city of Babylonia. Allah says, we surely send our two messengers or two uh, angels to test the people of Babylon. And we will see that who will learn the magic and who will deny. So many of them, they learned the magic because it was a test from God Almighty. The book of Kabbalah from where? They say Iraq, Babylonia. And they are learning this magic since then. And they are doing on the people. But Allah says, if all Prophet says in the hadith, if all of the world and shayateen wants, want to hurt anyone and Allah does not want it, they cannot do it. If opposite, if all of these people pro want to protect that guy, Allah does not want, he will not be protected. It is our faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, their magic, you know, they, their magic is so intense that there has been a given the example there has been given uh, sorry there has been an example given that ye, they, their magic can cross the whole camel into the eye of a needle that is the way they can do the magic literally doing so strong magic on people illuminati free missionaries missionaries illuminati not him the secret societies what are their main agendas this is their main agendas people changing them and then uh, you know, making this black magic into the world. May Allah protect us. So this was a message to you that these people, their mentality like that and now they want to expand and because they are just on the brink or on the verge, on the edge of the arrival of Masih Dajjal and they want to do anything. They will not tolerate any kind of resentment. No resentment will be tolerated. All intimidacy just get terrified by us. Then, then because now they are in the stage, final stage of all this preparatory work they were doing. Now this is the time they have to eat the fruits. And if you try to become the hurdle, then you know what will happen to you. So they are just like uh, the man, you know, a person which just have one, you know, like blinkers, like the animals, one side, that is, that we are the soul supreme. You see, when this whole political movement was started, we can divide it into three uh, eras, started by, in the beginning, this colonialism, these colonies were made by French, Dutch, Italians, Germans, Canada, French says is ours, huh? British, they say America is ours, the, the other part is the French is ours, Italian says this is ours, colonies, they made colonies. So once they made this, Australia was Holland colony before Holland, people don't know this. So they made colonies, colonies, so they call it Britannica, Pax Britannica. Then this Pax Britannica, America got independence from the civil war, this American war between the France and all these people, they kicked them out. British were out from America, 1776. Jeffrey Thomas Jefferson declared the independence, this letter of declaration, and then all were kicked out. This was the start, especially after World War II, Pax Americana.